Miller's Pro Hobby Series auto darkening helmets are easy to use but it's an absolute must for owners to read and follow their owner's manuals before taking any helmet out for a test weld. The information in this section is for general education purposes and does not replace the owner's manual. Pro Hobby helmets feature a manual on auto off technology. That means the lens turns itself off to conserve power when not in use. To check that the lens is working properly, press the on button on the control panel. The lens will blink twice to show that it's functioning. Pro Hobby helmets feature shade settings from number 8 to number 12. The type of welding or cutting, along with the arc current and the welder's personal preference, affect how dark or light the helmet should be set for optimum visibility. Shade guidelines can be found on page 4 of the Pro Hobby helmet's owner's manual. To set shade, simply turn the dial on the control panel inside the helmet. Sensitivity, or how responsive the lens is to visible light, should be set in the mid-range, or 30 to 50 percent, for most applications. To set sensitivity, simply turn the dial on the control panel inside the helmet. Note that it may be necessary to adjust sensitivity for different lighting conditions, or if the lens is flashing on and off. In these cases, adjust sensitivity by first turning the sensitivity control to the lowest setting. Then press the on button to turn the helmet on. You'll know it went on if the lens darkens and lightens two times. Next, face the helmet in the direction it will be used, exposing it to the surrounding light conditions. Finally, gradually turn the sensitivity setting clockwise until the lens darkens. Then turn it back until slightly past the setting where the lens clears. The helmet is now ready for use. There isn't a grind mode setting on the Pro Hobby helmet. Grinding in a Pro Hobby helmet is not recommended. The lens delay affects how quickly the lens switches back to the number 3 light state after welding stops. A very short delay time is ideal for tack welding, whereas a longer delay time is important in high amperage applications where the molten puddle remains bright for some time after welding. The Pro Hobby helmet's delay setting adjusts from fast to slow with the flick of a switch. All Miller helmets feature ratchet style headgear that can be adjusted four ways for the ideal fit. The top band adjusts so it sits on the welder's head at the correct depth. Make the top band larger or smaller by popping out the tab, sliding the band to the correct position, and snapping the tab into place. The band that fits around the welder's head can be adjusted for tightness. Locate the knob at the back of the headgear. Push the knob in and turn it clockwise to make the band smaller or counterclockwise to make the band larger. A helmet's stop angle determines how close the shield comes to the chest when the shield is down. This can be adjusted, but Miller recommends that the welder try the factory setting first because it's set to the most comfortable angle for most welders. To set the stop angle, locate the four positioning studs on the right side of the headgear. Loosen the tension knob on the right side of the helmet. Reposition the stop angle arm to the preferred stud. And retighten the knob. Be careful, the knob tightness controls how easily the shield raises and drops, and also affects balance. Tighten to the same tension side to side for optimum balance. The final headgear adjustment is the distance of the lens to the face. Again, the factory setting is ideal for most welders, so the user should try the helmet on before making any adjustments. There are three possible front to back positions, which are controlled by the slots at the sides of the headgear. To adjust, loosen the tension knob from the right side of the helmet. Push the retaining bolt in to disengage locking mechanism. Move the bolt to the desired position. Repeat on the left side of the helmet, and when finished, adjust the knobs to the same tension on both sides. To replace the headgear, first remove the current headgear by removing the tension knobs, O-rings, and washers from both sides of the helmet. As you disengage the headgear from the shield, pay attention to the anchoring rings inside the helmet. 
Notice that the ring on the right is serrated and has an R embossed into it. The ring on the left has an L embossed into it. To reinstall headgear, first position the retaining bolts into the center slots on both sides of the headgear. Then add the left side washer and right side stop angle arm. Place the bolts through the holes on both sides of the shield. Starting on the right side, hold the bolt into position inside the helmet while replacing the outside washer, O-ring, and tension knob. Tighten the knob just slightly. Repeat on the left side of the helmet. Next, position the stop angle adjustment arm on the right side of the helmet to the preferred tab and tighten both knobs to an equal tension. The sweatband is held in place by three tabs. To remove the sweatband, unfasten the outer layer of material from each tab like you would unbutton a button. Then unwrap the material and unfasten the inner layer the same way. To replace it with a new sweatband, position the material foam side in. Align the first set of holes with the tabs and fasten it like you'd button a button. Then wrap the sweatband material around the headgear and fasten the outer layer the same way. Miller's optional hard hat adapters come with step-by-step -step installation instructions that are universal for most hard hats. For more information, please refer to those instructions. To replace the Pro Hobby's front cover lens, you must first remove the cover lens frame. Start by loosening the corners of the Pro Hobby cover lens frame, pulling up each corner approximately a quarter inch. Then grasp the cover lens frame and remove it from the shield. Now gently push the front cover lens to free it from the frame. The front cover lens has a rubber gasket around it. Remove the gasket and keep it nearby. Now remove the protective plastic covering from your new front cover lens. Place the gasket around the new lens and press the lens back into the frame, making sure the tabs are aligned, the smooth side is facing the frame, and the fit is snug all the way around. Reinstall the front cover lens frame by aligning the tabs with the tab slots on either side of the lens assembly and popping it back into place. Check to make sure the frame is securely fastened. To replace the inside cover lens on a Pro Hobby helmet, look inside the helmet at the lens assembly. Then locate the thumbnail notch at the top of the inside cover lens. Use the notch to lift the inside cover lens, then slide the lens free of the assembly. Next, remove the protective covering from your new inside cover lens. Bow it slightly to slide it under the tabs on either side of the lens and secure it in place. To remove the lens assembly, you must first remove the cover lens frame. Start by loosening the corners of the Pro Hobby cover lens frame, pulling up each corner approximately a quarter inch. Then grasp the cover lens frame and remove it from the shield. Turn the helmet so it's facing you. Then lift up on the lip above the battery while pushing the lens from behind. Replace the lens assembly by positioning it behind the bottom two tabs and snapping it into place. Finally, reinstall the cover lens frame by aligning the tabs with the tab slots on either side of the lens assembly and popping it back into place. To install the magnifying lens in a Pro Hobby helmet, you must first remove the cover lens and the lens assembly. Start by loosening the corners of the Pro Hobby cover lens frame, pulling up each corner approximately a quarter inch. Then grasp the cover lens frame and remove it from the shield. To remove the lens assembly, turn the helmet so it's facing you. Then gently push the assembly from behind to free it from the tabs holding it in place. Locate the lens holder inside the helmet shield. Install the magnifying lens by sliding it into the lens holder from the top. Make sure that the flat side of the lens is down and the magnification levels facing you. Remove the magnifying lens from the frame by sliding it out of the lens holder from the bottom up. 
Replace the lens assembly by positioning it behind the bottom two tabs and snapping it into place. Finally, reinstall the cover lens frame by aligning the tabs with the tab slots on either side of the lens assembly and popping it back into place. To replace the battery on a Pro Hobby helmet, first locate the battery cover above the controls inside the helmet. Place your thumb on the grip area and slide the cover to the left to remove it. Replace the batteries with AAA alkaline batteries only, with the positive terminals facing to the left. Reinstall the battery cover and make sure the new battery is functioning by pressing the on button. The lens will darken twice if it's working properly. A list of replacement parts for each Miller helmet can be found on a sticker inside the helmet. For a complete list of replacement parts, see the helmet's owner's manual or go to www.millerwelds.com. To keep your Miller helmet looking clean and functioning properly, wipe it after each use with a soft cloth dampened with a mild soap and water mixture, paying special attention to clean the arc sensors. Never use abrasive detergents or immerse the lens assembly in liquid. Miller is an industry leader for warranties and warranty service. All Miller helmets come with a two-year limited warranty against defects in materials or workmanship. Check the Miller Helmet Owner's Manual for more details.